Hello. Today you're going to be investigating elastic potential energy. When you apply a force to something and it changes shape, the, um, the energy that's stored in that object is referred to as elastic potential energy. And when you take away the force and it returns to its original size and shape, that energy is returned. An obvious example is a rubber band. Apply a force and it changes shape. In it now is stored elastic potential energy. Take the force away and it returns to its original shape. Another object that does that is a spring. You could apply a force to squash the spring. It now stores elastic potential energy. Or you could apply a force to stretch the spring. It now stores elastic potential energy. What you're going to do today is carry out a short and fairly simple investigation into seeing how a spring changes its shape as you apply a different force. And to do that, you're going to need the following equipment. You're going to need a clamp and stand, half metre rule, and here's your spring. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and I'll disappear from picture. You'll just see my hands. When you set up this equipment, to make your life a little bit easier, you should adjust the position of the meter rule so that what I have done is I've arranged it so that the bottom of my spring, if you can see, is in line with the 10 on my scale on my half meter rule. This is useful because you're going to be working out the extension of the spring rather than the actual position of it. So we need to note the initial position because we're going to take away that number 10 from all our subsequent readings. You're also going to need to put together a results table on your worksheet and it's going to look something like this where we've got force in newtons, that's our independent variable. Then we're going to have a note of the position of the spring for the different forces in centimetres. Notice headings and units in each column. And finally, a third column for the actual extension, how much it's stretched by. Again, that would be in centimetres. And initially, at the moment, without any, zero, without any force added, I will have zero newtons as my first reading. The position of the spring, of the bottom of the spring, the very lowest point, it's important to always measure to the same point on the spring, that is at 10 centimetres. And my initial extension of the spring is zero. Obviously, with no force, it is not extended. Having done that, you will then apply your first force. This hanger on its own is 100 grams. Now, thanks to gravity, that is one newton. So place that onto your spring, allow it to extend, and then read across. You could use a ruler to help you with this. Read across as, as accurately as you can, and I reckon that is about 13.3 centimetres. So back to my results. This is now one newton. And the string, string, the spring position is now 13.3 centimetres. So my extension will be how much? Yep, 13.3, take away 10. So that's going to be 3.3. .3. Next, add another newton. So this is me now up to 2 newtons, and I allow this spring to again stretch. Same thing, measure the position of the spring now to the lowest point. That looks like 17.5 to me. So back to my results table. 2 newtons, 17.5. Now here's where you might go wrong. I don't want you to take 13.3 away. I want you to take the original position of the spring away because I want to know the total stretch at this point. How much the total extension is. So 17.5, take away 10. I can do that in my head. That's why I'm your physics teacher. 7.5 centimetres. Now I want you to continue this up to about 7 newtons, but I don't want it to go any further. Me again. After that, we'll be plotting a graph to investigate our relationship between force 
and extension of our springy little friend. Good luck.